My entitled parents kick me out of their house at the age of 10 years old, forcing my grandparents to take me in and raise me as their own child. And now, later in life, after I received an inheritance from my grandparents, my parents are coming back into my life and demanding that I hand over everything that I inherited. And I am honestly amazed by how clueless and absolutely obnoxious they truly are. Here's what happened. So to start things off, I was born when my mother and father were only 17 years old. This forced both of my parents to drop out of high school and each have to get their GED just so they could find work right away. My father especially was not happy about this because he had dreams of playing football in college and instead he had to work at a gas station. He said to my face many times that I ruined his dream. My mother hardly raised me at all as she had to work as well. They had some cranky old lady next door who would watch me most of the time. She wasn't so bad. I mean, she gave me more attention than my parents did. My father eventually managed to land a better job as a manager due to his experience of running a gas station. It was right after that that my mom got pregnant with my sister. I was six years old when she was born and I wasn't exactly shown much love before that. But once my sister came along, it was made pretty obvious to even my six-year-old self that I was completely unwanted. The only ones who seemed to care about me were my paternal grandparents and somewhat my babysitter. And they were more like a parental figure to me because they treated me the way a little kid needed to be loved. We lived in a two-bedroom apartment and as my sister got older, it went from me sharing a bedroom with her to me being kicked out of the room entirely. I slept on the couch for two years and I barely had anything to my name other than clothes, school supplies, and an old Game Boy. When I was 10 years old, my parents decided that they were going to move away, but this move did not include me. And you know what? I actually ended up being fine with this as my grandparents had agreed to take me in. And when that happened, my life instantly became better and there were a couple of other kids my age in the neighborhood that I got to hang out with. We rode bikes together, we played video games together, we would build forts and we got dirty playing in the creek. You know, stuff that a normal kid would enjoy. I was finally happy. As time went on, I grew up and I eventually moved out, but I later moved back in to help my grandparents' house as they were getting old and living off of their retirement savings. So some rent money from me went a long way in paying for the bills. My grandfather was the kind of person who wanted to build a shelter during the Cold War, but he never got around to it. He wanted to volunteer for military service in the 60s, but was turned down due to a medical condition and the fact that his eyesight was not great, so he focused on saving whatever he thought he needed. He told me many times it was better to have something and not need it than to need it and not have it. Our area suffered from numerous power outages in the winter due to heavy winds and storms, so having gasoline and propane for heaters and generators was a must. All of these saving habits became my own as time went on because it was better to need this stuff rarely than to not have it at all. Fast forward and about five years back, my grandma passed away suddenly and my grandfather was heartbroken, with him also going about a year and a half later. Pretty much everything they owned was willed to me. Their savings, their house, their vehicles, their stuff, everything. The house was long paid off and my grandfather knew how to keep up with maintenance. In fact, after my grandmother passed away, he kind of doubled down on renovating the place. He had the roof redone, the house was repainted by us inside and out, and we fixed a lot of things. My grandfather's neighbor even came by to help redo the plumbing. Ironically enough, the HOA was rather happy with these changes because the house itself didn't look run down anymore. I mean, it all happened so suddenly. One morning, I was just fixing breakfast and my grandfather never came downstairs. You couldn't keep this man from bacon even if you tried. So I went to check on him and he wasn't moving. I called the paramedics and they told me that he passed away in his sleep. And this is right about when my parents came into the picture again. My parents made my grandfather's funeral an absolute nightmare. In fact, they didn't even bother to show up for my grandmother's funeral. They claimed that they were too busy. At my grandfather's funeral, they didn't seem to grieve at all. My sister also showed up wearing a brightly colored designer dress. I noticed my parents repeatedly whispering to each other and glaring at me whenever I looked at them. I come to find out at the will reading that my parents knew that they'd been disinherited a long time ago, all because of the way they treated me. And they thought it was extremely unfair that I got everything. In fact, they thought it was so unfair that they threatened to sue me to contest the will. I got repeated calls and messages from my father, as well as my mother and my sister, all of which telling me I needed to do the right thing and give my father what was supposed to be his. And when they did that, I just told them to get lost. Eventually, my parents ended up taking me to court to challenge the will. 
will. But the judge ruled in my favor after seeing the will and hearing us both out. So it wasn't a long, drawn-out legal battle, thankfully. The judge even looked at my parents with absolute disgust after seeing the will and hearing about the mistreatment of me and my childhood. He called my father a terrible parent and stating that my grandparents were right to disown him. My father just hung his head in silence, but he made sure to stop me outside the courtroom and tell me that I was the biggest mistake in his life. And if he could go back in time, he would make sure I never existed, while also saying that he should have been a football star. And instead, he has to wear a name tag from 9 to 5. I told him that mistake or not, my grandmother and grandfather could see what kind of nasty person he was. I also did not ask to be born, and the only real love I ever got was from my grandparents. So I just told him straight up that he was no father of mine. I got a few more phone calls, as well as some letters from my parents, all demanding money among other things. But over time, they just stopped because I completely stonewalled them. I never responded to emails or letters and I stayed silent during the phone calls. A few times, I just left the phone sitting on the counter with them ranting and raving until they realized I wasn't listening. Aside from not getting the house or money, my parents seemed particularly bothered that they couldn't get a rise out of me. But I was prepared to go all out against them and they knew it. So in the end, they just left me alone. From what I know, looking back at Facebook for the past decade, my sister tried to get into modeling, got married, had two kids, got divorced, and is currently unhappily working a job she feels is beneath her. My mother currently works retail and is also very vocal about her disdain of it. Like my father, she peaked in high school. She was a cheerleader back then and even had her old uniform framed on the wall. My father was pretty much at the same job for 25 years. As for me, I'm in my late 30s now and I live pretty much debt-free in a nice neighborhood. Not many people are in the financial situation that I am at my age. I'm single, I have a paid off house, I've got two vehicles, and a decent amount in the bank. So with all things considered, I'm just glad to be away from my awful parents. What an awful upbringing you had to deal with. But also, what awesome people your grandparents were. They took you in right away, and they allowed you to have some kind of childhood. I mean, what kind of parent would just kick their kid out at 10 years old? That is seriously insane to me. And if I was the grandparents in this situation, I would absolutely do the exact same thing and write the original poster's father out of the will. There's no way they're going to get anything from me if this is the way that they treat their son. And it's so delusional that this guy's like, oh, I should have been a football star. No, you should have been a better father. Because in the end, these people got exactly what they deserve. Because the original poster honestly deserved a better childhood. And these parents seriously should be ashamed of themselves. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. I think that my boyfriend doesn't find me attractive anymore ever since he got his dream body and I seriously don't know what to do. So my boyfriend was a scrawny teenager when we first started dating and girls really didn't go for him either. He got sick of being skinny and he wanted to get big. So I motivated him into being consistent with the workouts and the diet changes that he went through. I was there for him and supported him emotionally when he was making cuts and making progress. And you know what? It paid off. He got really fit. Eventually, girls started throwing themselves at him. He curved all of them at first, although he did admit to flirting with some girl, which I stupidly allowed because I didn't want to come off as the crazy, jealous girlfriend. But then came our senior year. I needed time to focus more on myself and my education. I needed to get really busy. We had been on breaks before, so I wasn't that worried in asking for one. I had stayed loyal when he used to ask for breaks when life got super busy for him. So I figured that he would obviously do the same for me. But it all came crashing down on me. We were on a call and I broke everything down to him. He just stayed silent, like he'd been waiting for this to happen. I had mentioned that we might need to do this before, and he was not phased. He said, can I talk to other girls while you're away? And I immediately replied back by saying, of course. Again, I just wanted to seem like the perfect laid-back girlfriend that was secure in herself and her man. And I was. I never for a second doubted that I was anything less than his dream girl. That is, until his conversations with me afterwards, which consisted of backhanded compliments, saying stuff like, you have no idea how many ladies I've listened to, stuff like that. But I just laughed, and I just said that there was no way that he would have talked to other women. I wasn't taking him seriously. He then proceeded to text some girls and get them to send some scandalous photos to him, only to then show them to me right then and there. And after he did that, I just started to cry. I didn't cry because of his borderline cheating, but mostly because of how different the girls compared to me. They were all skinny with size zero waist 
waist and A cups, whereas I've got a bigger chest and thicker thighs. I'm a fuller person. He then said that I had asked for it by provoking him, and he said this later on that night when we called each other, and in the end, he never actually apologized for it, but his way of comforting me was by saying that I'd never be replaced. It did comfort me to some extent, but it hasn't been the same since. He's admitted to talking to one specific girl. He refused to tell me her real name, but showed me a picture of hers, and lo and behold, she was skinny with a conventionally attractive face. But no, it was okay, because this chick knows that he's taken, right? He decided to rub salt in the wound even further by mentioning how I couldn't fathom how pretty her body was and how he wouldn't share. I'm realizing just how sick it was right now, even though, according to him, he stopped what they had soon after. He doesn't really respond to me properly anymore. He uses very short and aggressive replies and then turns it around and blames me when I mention how we never talk much these days. I know this is supposed to be a break, but it's a break on my end. So why is he the one acting unavailable all the sudden? He was never like this when he was skinny. We used to go on breaks when life got hectic, but we would always technically be together. We would be loyal to one another. He says he loves me, but that's about it. He never shows it to me anymore and doesn't care when I send him photos anymore in the slightest. He used to go crazy for them, but now it's almost like it's nothing. The one thing I took pride in for us was our ability to communicate. Should I swallow my pride and ask him what's up? Even if it might break my heart, we've been together for three years now and I don't want to make it all just go down the drain. What should I do? Honestly, I am very surprised that you're even with this guy anymore. He clearly does not value you in the first place and he's obviously got his eyes set on other women in the area and I just don't think this is a good relationship for you in the slightest. You are letting so many things slide. He showed you inappropriate photos of other women and he basically has another woman on check to basically step in and take your place at any point and that's not fair for you in the slightest. Like seriously he is cheating on you. There's nothing borderline about this and he's also blaming anything negative in this relationship on you. Like in a way he kind of sounds like a narcissist. So seriously in my opinion you can do so much better than this guy. You are both only 18 years old and you'll find somebody who really does care about you and you only because the way he's acting is completely out of line and you could do so much better. My sister says I can't be at her wedding if I bring my boyfriend who I have known for several years at this point and I'm so upset I seriously don't know what to do. So I met my boyfriend in college seven years ago and we started dating five years ago. He is super close and loving with my family. He was there for my niece's births, baptisms, Christmases, vacations, you name it. We are extremely committed to each other for the long run but don't want to get married until we are financially stable and both of our careers are where we want to be. My sister has been with her fiance for two years and engaged for six months. My sister is the type of girl who has dreamed of getting married since she was a little girl. It did not matter who proposed. She just wanted to be married. I have never cared if I ever got married or not. As long as I have a good career and a good relationship, I'm fine. In the beginning of her relationship, she tricked me into going on a double date with her fiance as well as her brother. She had said it was dinner with her and a friend, but it was most definitely not. The brother kept making passes at me the entire time, and I told him I had a boyfriend, and the whole situation made me uncomfortable. At their engagement party, my boyfriend noticed that the brother wouldn't stop staring at me, and we tried our best to avoid him altogether. Every time I have seen this guy, he has been super weird towards me. My sister wanted me, my fraternal twin, and two brothers in her wedding. The wedding is supposed to be next month in the beginning of May. My sister just told me that I'm going to be walking down the aisle with her fiance's brother. I told her that he makes me unbelievably uncomfortable and I thought I would be walking with my own brother. But apparently this is something her fiance is insisting and she just wants to make him happy. It seems like a pretty weird thing to insist and I know that it's just some kind of scheme between the two brothers. My other siblings also thought it was weird and voiced their objections to our sister. She got upset and said this is her wedding and she'll do whatever she wants. I told my boyfriend this and he was upset for me. He's confident enough in himself that he knows this guy would never be competition but he knows how uncomfortable I am with this situation. The other day we had family dinner at my mom's house and I took this as an opportunity to bring up the aisle situation with my mother around. My sister got extremely upset and started crying saying I was trying to ruin her marriage. I was so confused as was everyone else and I tried to explain that he makes me and my boyfriend 
boyfriend extremely uncomfortable. She then said that I can't bring my boyfriend to her wedding anymore, and if I do, then I'm no longer gonna be her bridesmaid. She gave no reason whatsoever as to why I can't bring him along, and my siblings were just as upset, considering they like my boyfriend a lot better than my sister's fiance. I thought I would give her a few days to calm down and rethink all of this, but she has not changed her mind. My 19-year-old brother's girlfriend is still invited to the wedding, but my boyfriend is not allowed to be there. My boyfriend is an incredible guy and has been nothing but kind and generous to my sister. His feelings are hurt, but he still wants me to go to the wedding. I think my sister is being an unreasonable jerk and I will be pretty upset at the wedding if my life partner is not there with me. Being her bridesmaid is something I can live without. So should I bring my boyfriend or go without him? Or should I demand that my boyfriend be allowed to come to her wedding and that she's being super unfair? Now, I love my sister, but I don't understand why she's forcing some silly request by her creepy brother-in-law. And worst of all, my family is being absolutely useless in helping me figure this out. What should I do? First off, I think you've already figured this out, but your sister's being unreasonable. I honestly don't know why she's trying to pair you up with this guy who clearly makes you uncomfortable. It honestly does seem like a setup, and that's just super creepy. Like, you even explain to this guy, hey, I have a boyfriend, but he still keeps trying to make passes at you and stare at you? Like, that's just weird in my opinion. You're never gonna hook up with him and he needs to stop. So that alone, in my opinion, is more than enough reason to say, hey, you know what? I think I'm gonna back out. This guy is creepy. I don't wanna be around him and I will happily sit in the audience and watch you get married. And you know what? She's only saying that your boyfriend can't come along because you exposed her to your mom as well as the rest of your siblings. And although they're being very nonchalant about this, you can bet that they're probably on your side. They like your boyfriend, they like your future partner, and they also don't understand why he's not allowed to come to the wedding. Like, that's just weird. So I think with whatever goes on or whatever you decide to do, I think you just need to remember how your sister's acting right now because her behavior is incredibly toxic and you do not deserve this in the slightest. A friend of a friend made it very clear that he wants to pursue my girlfriend. And all the while, my girlfriend knew about this guy's intentions but kept that information from me. And now, as a result, I'm incredibly offended. And I seriously wish she had just told me in the first place before I committed to spend any kind of time with this guy or her friends. Here's what happened. So for a bit of backstory, my girlfriend attended a bachelorette party a month ago. One of the bridesmaids was dropped off by her husband and a friend of the husband. In the five minutes that that friend saw my girlfriend, he supposedly fell in love with her at first sight and made it clear to his friends and the bride that he was interested, despite the bride telling him that my girlfriend was in a happy relationship. The bride shares this in confidence with my girlfriend, asking her to keep it a secret, as it is just silly gossip. Fast forward a month, and it's Friday, and I'm at a dinner of the wedding rehearsal. My girlfriend and I sit at a small table, and this friend of the husband intentionally sits across from me, all while his friends sit at an entirely different table. We make conversation and have a really good time, and upon leaving, he mentions that we should all hang out together at the wedding as well. Saturday comes around, and at the wedding, that friend is preceded at an entirely different table, so we don't interact much. As they leave, however, the bridesmaid, her husband, and the friend of the husband all approach us and enthusiastically mention that we should all hang out outside of the wedding more, which kind of strikes me as odd, considering we didn't really engage much. But in the end, I agree nonetheless. At night, I bring this up to my girlfriend, and I can't quite wrap my head around it, but that's right about when she lets out the secret. We've been discussing this ever since, and I feel like I deserve to know when he started approaching us on Friday, whereas my girlfriend insists that she didn't tell me because she felt our relationship was strong and there was nothing to be worried about. And also, she didn't want to make me angry or make things awkward. My girlfriend states that if he made any obvious moves, like asking for her number or anything like that, then she would have shut him down and let him know right then and there. I personally would have never wanted to be in the dark about this. It just makes me feel like a complete idiot while I invite this guy to hang out with us and wingman him into my relationship. As close partners, I feel like I should be included in details like this. I don't care if some random person on the street hits on my girlfriend, but if it's someone who's potentially close or a co-worker or something like that, then that's an entirely different story. Also, I would have wanted my girlfriend to have relayed a message to the bride or a bridesmaid that she wasn't interested at all after the events on Friday. Is this something reasonable to expect, or am I just being controlling? What should I do? In my opinion,
opinion, your girlfriend absolutely should have told you about that. This weirdo is repeatedly and intentionally inserting himself in situations where he can further his goal of getting closer to your girlfriend. This situation, in my opinion, is a snake in the grass trying to break up your relationship. And I mean, honestly, even if your girlfriend is used to a lot of male attention or anything like that, the day that he sat across from you to try and befriend you, she should have let you know what was going on and why he was acting the way he was. So no, in my opinion, you are not being unreasonable. And I think the fact that you're in a relationship and your girlfriend decided to keep this information from you is, in my opinion, pretty sketchy. And it's something that the both of you really do need to talk about. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out in the description below and subscribe.